Hello and welcome to part three of the Django and Celery series. The focus of this tutorial is scheduled tasks or scheduling tasks. So this is part three of the Celery series. So by all means, have a look at the other tutorials leading up to this one. I do start to assume that maybe you've seen some of these tutorials. So I may not go over all the details that I've already covered, but I try where best to provide a recap. So we start off the tutorial by having a look at a package called Flower. So this is for Windows. There's a few little things that we need to do to get it working on Windows with the latest version or the current version as of recording. Then when we then move into installing Django Celery Beat, which is gonna give us a, an easy interface or easy backend, we can start to configure scheduled tasks. And we'll have a look at some of the different parameters and start to explore those parameters on how to configure scheduled tasks. So we're fairly new into this series, so we'll just go through the process. So on this machine, this is a Windows machine I'm working on. There are some guides for Linux. I'm using Rabbit, RabbitMQ, uh, so I need to get that started. So in the repository that you'll find in the link in the description, you'll see that in the repository there's a requirements file. Obviously those need to be installed if you're going to run this uh, repository, but also a commands text. So in here I've just left some interesting and useful commands that you can utilize and you can work from there. So if you are using RabbitMQ on Windows, this is uh, the default installation path. So you're gonna need to get your, uh, you need to get RabbitMQ uh, working to begin with. So I, I'm just gonna go into the a new console window and get that started. So if you remember from the previous tutorials, this is our message broker. Um, there is a tutorial on how to use a um, how to use Redis online utilizing Heroku service. So if you want to have a look at that, then please do. I promise this is not self-advertising. There's just some useful things if you don't want to install some additional software on your computer. Okay, so I appreciate this is a big introduction. So let's just finish off before we start just going over the fact that there's three tasks potentially in the repository. And we are on the third task today. So in the first task, we created some tasks where we just added some numbers. The second task was an email activity. So users were able to actually type into a form and an email was sent. A uh, task was sent to Celery to send an email. So that was completed. And obviously now we're going to utilize or create some scheduled tasks. So we will come back to these tasks and maybe do some scheduling with these tasks. So let's first of all install Flower. So go ahead and pip install flower. I think I've already got mine installed. So that's the first step. Now there is a additional step with flower to get it working on Windows. If you go to the commands, you'll see that there is a, a section here called working with flower in Windows. So you're gonna need to, here I'm utilizing my virtual machine. You're gonna need to find your uh, async IO package or sorry, pi file. So you're gonna need to edit this file um, remember, if you're using a virtual machine, it's going to be in this directory right here. Else you're going to need to look in your Python directory and you're looking to change or add this command or this line of code here. So just make sure that sys is imported, it should be at the top of the file, and then add this here. So this is just a known problem. This just fixes that problem and Flower should work with the latest version uh, of Python, Flower and Django. So I've opened up my async IO pi file and I've just made sure that the sys is imported. And then on line 35, you can see I've just copied and pasted that line of code. That's all that's needed. So let's just close that and the command we're gonna to need to start flower. So this is gonna start the server, the flower server. Okay, so with that started, we can now head over to the browser. So now when you navigate to the local host with the port 5555, we now have Flower activated and you can see that there's a number of different activities that are gonna be tracked and the different details that is this Flower GUI interface is gonna provide. So there are some, the monitoring tools here, it's not very useful 
um, for what we need, but it is just going to provide you some additional information which you might want to hook up in your environment. And is it you know, overall is, it, is a good package to potentially have just to see an overview of the activities that are passing through. Okay, so let's head over to creating some schedules so we can see in Flower some of the activities that are running. So let's open up a new terminal because we need to keep Flower open. So we open up a new terminal here and then we're going to pip install the second application, which is going to be the Django Celery Beat. So once you've installed Celery, go over to the installed apps and just make sure you've included it in the installed apps. And then you should be able to then migrate. That should add a few new tables in the admin panel, which we can then utilize to create some periodic tasks. So I go ahead and just create a new super user. And this should give us access to the admin, of course. And then we can go ahead and run the server. So let's go back into the server. So we should now have this new section here called uh, periodic tasks. Okay, so periodic tasks. So let's go over and create a new task. So head into the periodic, periodic tasks, sorry, and let's create a new task. So we just give it a name, new task. Now we may have some tasks that are registered. So these are tasks that exist in our application. So if you remember from task one, we add the add. So let's just use that and we'll just give it a description. Now we need to set the interval. interval. So what we're gonna do now is set how often this is going to run. So we click on the plus and then we just add, we can add a number of periods and then the time interval. So here I'm just gonna go for seconds and then just select, sorry, five seconds. So this is gonna run every five seconds. And there's more information coming about these different cron tab schedules to help you out if you wanna do it manually. Now I want it to run today and right now so we can just set that up. And this isn't gonna be a one-off task. And if you remember, this takes an argument uh, two numbers. So let's just add two numbers together. So this is the task we created earlier. So just check out task one task if you're not too sure what I mean, or the first tutorial. And that should be it. We should now just press save. So we now have a task that's ready to run. So before we start running tasks, let's just have a look at the settings file of the core. So let's just set up a manual schedule here for Celery Beat. So this is pretty straightforward. And it follows the same principles like you've just seen. So we create a scheduled task. First of all, obviously we create the Celery Beat scheduler or schedule. So we create a scheduled task. We give it a task name. So we select the task that we want to run. So in task one, we've got tasks. Inside of there, I've got a new task called add. So I'm running that task there. And then I set the schedule. So here I'm gonna set the schedule for 10 seconds. So to give you a, an idea of utilizing CronTab here and setting schedules, I'm gonna leave some text here and it's just gonna give you an overview of the different types of settings you might apply in this CronTab here. So um, this will be uh, different schedules that you're gonna set up at different times, at different periods, uh, depending on when you want the schedule to run. Okay, so in this instance, I'm just running in seconds. So I've defined 10 seconds. So let's just move that down to five to make it a little bit more instance. And then the last thing I'm gonna need, if you remember the add addition task needed some arguments. So I've got 10 plus 10, so I'm gonna run that. Okay, so next up, we need to start all these services. So we definitely have the our message broker turned on, our RebitMQ. And we've got Flower installed and scheduled here. And um, it looks like there's been an, an issue potentially here. Um, so we'll just close that down and start that again. Okay. And then we've got uh, here, we've got the server running. Here we're going to have uh, Celery started. So I head off and start Celery, utilizing that command. So that's now ready and notice all the tasks that it's found. And now we're gonna go off and also start up the um, beat. So let's start beat. There we go. So we do have a scheduled task here. 
So there it is. So you can see that it's picked up the scheduled task, uh, sending due task, scheduled task. That's what we called it, scheduled task. And it's, it's gone off and sent. So if we now go into Celery, you can see that it's processing 10 plus 10, uh, 20. And if we then go into the browser flower here, you can see that we've now had um, six tasks being processed. And you can now kind of see the breakdown of those tasks, the arguments that have been sent across. Okay, so you're probably wondering, well, why isn't the the task, the periodic task from the database being dealt with? Why isn't it running? So simply because we haven't told it to run the task. So when we start beat, we can start beat in different modes. So whereas before, uh, let's have a look at the command that we utilized before. Um, it was the celery a core beat. So here it sets up beat, but we don't explicitly tell beat to utilize the database scheduler. So this is why the schedule that we created worked in the settings. Um, so you can see that we need to reconfigure this. We need to start beat in a different manner if we want to utilize also the schedule from the database. So that's a slightly longer command that we need to type in. So I'll just put it up here so you can see it. Um, it will be in the, um, the command text that you'll find down here. So you'll find that um, in the repository if you download that. So you can see what we need to do here. We need to actually also start the scheduler. So this is the command we need to actually type in here. So I've closed beat and now I'm opening it up again. So this is going to take a couple of seconds to pick up the schedule, um, but eventually it should start working. So here we go. So this should be every five seconds, remember. And let's just have a look at the outcome. So so back in Flower, you can see here that if I refresh, uh, we should be able to see, if I go back, uh, let's do it by started. Okay, and you can see that the last task here was uh, 30. So you can see that it's running. So we can just clarify that with, in obviously Celery, like we've done here. You can see that it's returning 30. So there's two methods here. If you want to use the, the database scheduler, you're gonna need that command. If you want to just utilize schedules that you're gonna create, maybe in the settings here, and that's slightly different. So let's finish this tutorial by creating a new task. Uh, sorry, a new app. So I've created a new app here called task three. Inside of here, we've got some tasks. So this is a task here. We're gonna use the core management, uh, core command, import core command. That's gonna allow us to create uh, administrative commands inside of our method here, backup. So if you have a look here, we're actually utilizing the data dump or dump data, sorry. And we're dumping the task three, which has a nice little model here, a uh, simple model. So we're gonna just dump this data. So this is just a simple example and to get you thinking, well, now we have this facility for scheduling, of course, backing up data um, is probably one of our critical activities that you want to perform. And it could be done within this uh, management system. So utilizing beats, we could now go into the periodic task and we can now set up a a, strange, a new task. And of course, one of these tasks could be the backup task and we could then set up a custom task to action the backup every how often we want to backup. So just to demonstrate this is working, um, similar to the add task here, the addition task, in the settings here, we've created this uh, schedule for five seconds. So if I go ahead and just start Celery, um, I think we have, yeah, so the beat is already running. So if we move down here, you can see that it's now created the backup of the database and that's happening every five seconds. Okay, so that's just a simple example there of backing up some data in our database utilizing beat. So we're starting to move through the gears here. We have created a Celery instance now, so hopefully you're getting familiar with some of the commands that are needed. Remember to have a look in the commands text for some support with commands. So hopefully you've got your environment working and set now, 
And like I said, you're getting familiar with the commands and the settings that we've applied so far so that we can start to build upon this. So I apologize if it's a, you think it's a bit of a slow start. We will slowly start to build momentum in this series and start to speed up and get into obviously more depth. So we have now set up some scheduling and you've seen the different parameters or different methods of scheduling. We installed Flower, so hopefully you can have a, a browse over how that application and see if it's going to be useful for you. And we've installed Celery Beat and started that. We've noticed that there's different methods of starting Celery Beat and that's important uh, to understand. Um, again, if you're using Linux and Windows, there's going to be different configurations here. Ideally, starting um, Beat with Celery is probably the ideal way of working. In Windows, I think at the moment, that's not possible. And of course, we started to explore how to configure scheduled tasks. 